Hi guys, I'm Harry. And I'm Marion. This is the Driftwood Boat Blog, and in this episode, we're doing all about the Shannonurn Waterway locks and other locks in Europe. So I won't be needing this in this episode, I'll be needing this. And that looks a whole lot easier to use. Oh, and it is. <laughs> Stick around. <laughs> See, it doesn't matter whereabouts in the world you are, because canal locks are all the same, it's the same principle all the way along. So, whether you're using an automated lock like we have here on the Shannonurn Waterway, or you're using a manual lock like this one on the Royal Canal. The same principle applies all the way and through this it. time I have my little card, not my locky. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so the whole purpose of a canal lock is to take you from this level up to this level here. This is a weir, it's like a dam across the river and it's holding back the water so that on the left hand side of your picture you have enough navigational depth. The idea of a lock is to take you from the upper level to the lower level. In about 1550, a gentleman invented the, what we call the canal lock. And the idea of this was to lift a boat from one level up to another. You know the name of the person who invented them. He's very, very famous, but he's not famous for canals. He's not famous for locks. He's famous for something completely different. Can you guess who it is? I'll tell you in a few minutes. So I'm after dropping Marion off at the landing stage below the lock and the rest of it is easy peasy. So these lock cards are used all over the Shannon as well as the Shannon Iron Waterway. You use them on the Shannon Iron Waterway for going through the locks and also for operating the service blocks. They're available online from waterwaysireland.org. You can also buy them in any of the local shops or indeed you can buy them off the waterways patrollers if you're stuck and i'll put a link in the description below it really is this easy to close the bottom gates on the locks on the shannon iron waterway and compare that to the grief you have doing it on a manual lock i always find that it's best to put your backside up against the balance beam and yet your, let your legs do the work. After all, your legs are a lot stronger than your arms are. Look at poor Marion, she's not using the right system and wow, is she struggling. I always find it a good idea to let the water in on the same side as the boat is on. That way the water will wash around the lock and actually hold the boat in against the ball for you. It might seem odd to open it on the same side the boat's tied onto, but trust me, it's worth doing. These locks in the Royal Canal don't get an awful lot of traffic, so opening the sluices can be quite a job at times. Now you might think that going up in a lock is actually the more difficult than going down, but to be honest with you, it's really the other way around. It's not that it's, it's more difficult going down than going up, it's that there's a few things you need to watch out for. So let's swing about and I'll show you what I mean. And you can see the difference in the cleats here on the jetty. They have pins on either side of them for you to tie the ropes on, compared to the ones here at the lock that have no pins on the sides of the cleat. And that's to make sure you don't tie your rope onto it, you just pass the rope around it.
Two things that you really need to be sure to watch out for when you're going down in a lock is firstly, that you make sure you loop the rope around the bollard. Don't be tempted to tie it on. If you tie it on, as the boat descends, that rope is going to go tight. You won't be able to get the knot off because it'll go too tight and eventually the boat will actually flip over. The other thing is to make sure you're not too close to the gates at the back of the lock because as the water drops, the sill becomes exposed and it's quite easy to catch your rudder at the back of the boat on that sill. So make sure to keep forward of the sill. These yellow lines here mark where the sill is. Most locks will have an indication of some sort or another to let you know where that sill is. And one last thing to watch out for is make sure you don't have any knots in the rope. Or not, you get caught very, very easily. And once it's caught, it's very difficult to get it out in a hurry. So different jurisdictions have different rules and regulations, but here in Ireland, it's normal practice to leave the gates of the lock open when you're exiting. That way, there's at least a 50-50 chance that the next boat that comes along will be heading in the right direction. They won't have to stop and open the gates. In Ireland, we call this a lock key. Um, in the UK, I think they call it a windlass. But I mean, really, it's a lock key. It's a key to open the locks. On most French canals to prepare the lock, you just give this fella a quick twist and after a few hundred yards when you arrive at the lock, the gates will be open and ready for you. On the River Marne, the locks are prepared by means of this remote control. Once you're into the lock then, you can control the sluices and the gates by means of these bars. You simply lift the bar to activate it. Now the chap who designed this lock in the River Yon clearly had a sense of humour. The sides are sloped, and if you go into it on a busy day and you don't get room in that floating jetty, as the water level drops, the surface area reduces, it becomes a little bit more compact and mayhem ensues. Some of the rivers in France have a lot of commercial traffic. This lock here is on the River Seine. The barges are big and the locks are bigger still. Sometimes when you're sharing a lock with these guys, it can be a little bit intimidating. This lock on the Rhine is 26 meters wide and it's over 270 meters long. The rise in it is about 15 meters. It's pretty daunting. Now I include this lock because this is Ardna Crusha Dam on the River Shannon and it has one of the largest descents of any lock in Europe. When you go into here, you descend down to sea level, which is about 100 feet. It's a double lock. Well guys, that brings back some memories, some good, not so good memories of locks that we've been through yeah, in France and Germany. That was good fun. It, it was, was, it was, was, it was. But how we got to France was Harry and his dad took driftwood to France. It took him a couple of weeks to get there, but it was always Harry's dream to take the boat mm -hmm. to France and always his dream to write a book. So he wrote this book and it's driftwood from the Shannon to the Marne. It's not really a how to do book. It's, for a, it's a good read for a winter's evening. I have to Just tell you, we, we hadn't a clue what we were doing. We, we had never been to sea before in our lives. And we headed out um, of the Shannon at Limerick, which takes you out into the Atlantic uh, in a boat that really shouldn't go to sea. It's available in our own shop, which is driftwood.tv forward slash shop. And I have a link in the description below. So do you want to tell us who it was and invented Leo, the locks? Leonardo da Vinci. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so guys i hope you found the video a bit interesting i hope you learned some little thing out of it and uh if you did give it a thumbs up and if you have any questions stick them in the comments below strictly no sports question guys we are rotten at sports questions we're okay at boaty questions yeah. even then we might struggle from time to time but definitely nothing to do with sport no no so we'll say cheerio thanks for watching guys so the best place to subscribe to the channel is here on the homepage. Just click on the subscribe button and there beside it you see the notifications bell. Make sure to tick on that notifications bell, otherwise you won't get a notification every time we release a new video.